Hey, Jake Roy back here, 90s Ball Cards. So I have a video that some people have been anticipating for, for a little bit of time. I've been really looking forward to this. So we're gonna be opening 20 year old chocolate and basketball cards, which are packaged together. Sounds a little bit interesting to me. We'll see how it goes. Let's get into it. All right, so today we have an interesting box. Uh, it's already been opened, but there are unopened packs in here. So we've got 9798 Upper Deck Nestle Crunch Slam Dunk. Uh, so kind of a funky thing. This was a product that uh, Upper Deck and Nestle Crunch co uh, partnered on. And these packs, we, you'll see when we open them, they have inside a small Nestle Crunch bar, and they also have another clear plastic package of uh, basketball cards. So it was, you know, I don't know if it was more a way to sell more cards or sell more chocolate or, or what the case may be, but you may have seen some of these clear plastic uh, packs in different places for sale. So obviously in, in a number of cases, kids or whoever bought these were just looking for the chocolate and left the cards by themselves in packs unopened. So you can find them this way. In this box, we've got the packaging with the chocolate and the cards so you'll see how, exactly how they looked in 1997 when they came out and we'll see how well the chocolate has weathered uh, those 20 plus years it might be pretty interesting I don't know if I'm daring enough to try any but I know some people are are hoping that I will so we'll see we'll see what it looks like when it comes out I don't have high hopes but um, you know you'll you'll see it with me and maybe some bars will be in better shape than others who knows what we have in here so this has a bunch of the stars it's a 40 card set but there's also two insert sets and this while it says 97 98 it was made just after the 96 97 season so all the cards in here you're not going to have any tim duncan or tracy mcgrady any of the 97 98 draft class uh, it's basically iverson and kobe's rookie season so 96, 97 draft class would have been the, the last players that you'd see in here. So uh, those are some of the, the guys in here along with all the other stars of that time. It's really just the 40, 40 of the best players and then some of the inserts that go along with those. So let's get into some of the fire we can pull and, uh, and see what we have. All right, here we've got three of the cards that are in my collection that we could see here. So starting here with the Penny Hardaway, this is basically the base set. So nothing that is going to be uncommon to see in here. Uh, pretty cool looking cards uh, for a relatively cheap looking package of, of chocolate. So I think those are kind of neat, uh, but nothing to write home about. These aren't very valuable. These aren't very rare, but are kind of neat. Uh, getting into the inserts, so there aren't actually stated odds on the packaging in a Beckett anywhere that I could really find for these. So the crunch time insert here, we've got a Michael Jordan, and these are just randomly inserted in packs, and you could see a number of different star athletes uh, from that point in time. There's a Penny Hardaway, obviously there's a Jordan, there's uh, all the top stars really. There's 40 cards in this set, so the same size as the base set. No idea how many we may or may not see. Would love to see a Jordan. Would love to see a Penny, which I already have one of. Um, nothing crazy. I think the base cards probably look better than these again. And nothing very valuable with these. Uh, just something for a little bit of variant in, in the packaging. And then really what we're looking to get are these slam dunk inserts. So the, here we have a Darwin Ham. Pretty cool die cut. Very similar to the memorable moments from the 96, 97 uh, Collector's Choice set. So these were showing off some of the dunk contest, uh, not only the winners, but also the contestants. So obviously Darwin Ham was just a contestant in that. And these are, you know, pretty cool. The, again, the, there's no stated odds, but these were about one per box. So since we have about a half a box here, I don't know if we'll see any. It could have been one of those situations where whoever pulled uh, or opened this box, pulled one, and then they stopped and said, well, I'll, I'll sell the rest. So no idea what we might have inside, but there is a Kobe, and that dunk contest was in his rookie year. So that's really the most sought after card in this entire set. That card is an interesting card, you know, coming on the heels of that uh, helicopter tragedy. At one point right after that, those cards were selling for $50 or more. 
Before that, they were selling for about 15 to 20, and right now they've settled down at about 20 to 25 dollars, depending on condition. Um, you know, if you get a PSA 10, they can definitely sell for more, but PSA 9 doesn't really bump the price at all. So definitely would love to see a Kobe. There's also Michael Finley in the set. Those are really the two guys that I would enjoy seeing. I, I do enjoy Michael Finley, but all the pictures are pretty cool. I, I really like this graphic of Darvin Ham. It really reminds me of, of a computer game that I loved. It was NBA Live 97, where they had the starting sequence that looked very similar to this. So that's one of the things I love. And you know, a little bit of foil. These are definitely what you're looking for in these packs. But you know, if you don't get the Kobe, getting a Darvin Ham or something like that is about a dollar card. So it's kind of Kobe or, or bust for value, but still fun. So uh, let's get right in and see what we get. All right, here we've got the box. So you see here, you've got four trading cards, one Nestle Crunch bar. It does tell us it's got 24 packs in there. But again, this has already been opened up. So uh, you get a little picture of what the, the uh, Crunch bar could look like in some of the cards. So that's the box. Here's what we're looking at. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, cause I don't know how messy this may or may not be, is I'm going to open up all of these packs. You'll see what the chocolate looks like and you'll see the cards. I'm gonna separate the packaging of cards and the chocolate so we can get rid of all the chocolate and any mess it might make. And then we'll have the cards and then I'll open those cards. So I'm just gonna buzz through just getting the chocolate all situated and I'm gonna have probably some cleanup to do afterwards. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, just crumbles. Great. It smells like hot chocolate mix. All right, so uh, I got all that chocolate cleaned up. It, uh, it smells like Swiss Miss hot cocoa mix in here now, but I got that all wiped off the table. I got these packs cleaned up as best as I could. So we've got 12 packs here, uh, four cards per pack. You know, and since these are clear, you technically probably could look through to see if you've got a die cut. Uh, and you know, not to say that anybody, when you're selling these clear packs, hasn't already done that, but that's not the only thing you can look for. Obviously the Jordans are also sought after in these, so. Uh, let's bust right in. Hope we get some of that die cut fire. <laughs> All right, that was a tricky packaging. I think I'm gonna have to use scissors on the rest, which I know. Uh, you guys know I don't like using scissors, but that's a pretty tough plastic there to, to rip apart for whatever reason. I don't I've never run into something that difficult. So interesting there. Uh, Isaiah Ryder with the first one, Rick Smiths, Larry Johnson, and Kevin Johnson. And then this is just a checklist of what you can get. All right, Vin Baker, Lafonso Ellis, Sharif Abdurrahim, Marcus Campy, and a checklist. All right, Antonio McDice, got Joe Smith, Otis Thorpe, and Carl Malone, and a checklist. Marcus Camby, Glenn Rice, Eddie Jones, Sean Kemp, and a checklist. Alonzo Mourning, Levin Baker, 
Alfonso Ellis, Sharif Abdurrahim. All right, Reggie Miller. Oh, Olden Polonese, not Scotty Pippen. Terrell Brandon. Oh, oh yes, there we go. Slam dunk of Michael Finley. So not the Kobe, but the second best in my opinion uh, that we could get here, Michael Finley. That's a really sweet picture. I'm pumped. I have a little Michael Finley PC, so that's gonna go right into that PC. Great condition too. Sometimes the foil gets dinged. That's awesome. Wow, I wasn't even thinking we'd get any of those. Pretty pumped. Alonzo Morning, Glenn Rice, Sean Kemp. Did I skip a card? Only three cards in that one. Oh, Otis Thorpe, Alonzo Morning, Sean Kemp, Glenn Rice. Okay. Glenn Rice, Eddie Jones, Sean Kemp, Kevin Garnett, very nice. Eric Williams, Reggie Miller, oh, Olden Polonese, Terrell Brandon. Glenn Rice, Otis Thorpe, Sean Kemp, Antonio McDice, a lot of the same players. Kind of surprising. All right, two packs left. Brian Big Country Reeves. We got a Juwan Howard, Dikembe Mutombo. Some different players here. Patrick Ewing. All right. Last pack. Tony McDice, Joe Smith, Otis Thorpe, Carl Malone. All right. That's what we got. All right, so you saw what we got there. I am pretty pleased with how we did. Uh, you know, definitely the highlight was the Michael Finley slam dunk die cut. So this was the fire we were looking for to get a die cut. And like I told you at the beginning, having exactly half of the box actually with the 12 packs, uh, I was thinking there's probably a good chance that somebody went through and pulled whatever they could out of the first half and got a die cut and figured there was nothing else left. A little bit surprised we didn't get any crunch time, you know, so I showed you guys the Jordan. I do have a penny as well. Uh, there's some other players in there. Surprised we didn't see any of those, but again, there's not stated odds for these. So they're all kind of approximate, you know, the randomly inserted uh, kind of stuff. So definitely the highlight was that Finley. Really pumped to have that. I have a little bit of a Finley PC like I had mentioned, so that's gonna go in there. And this is one of those cards I was hoping to get for my PC for Finley. Obviously, I would have loved to get the Kobe because it's a really cool picture. It's obviously the most valuable out of all of them and uh, always cool. My wife is a big Kobe fan. I know that we've talked about that before, so it's a cool card to have, you know, just kind of something that she can enjoy as well. So Finley was the second best, uh, definitely better than their Darvin Ham or some of the other guys you could get. Uh, really pumped for that. Surprised with the base, uh, you know, really Kevin Garnett was the best player that we pulled. There is an Iverson that I have a copy of. There's Jordan, there's Penny. We didn't see any of those guys. We saw a lot of repeats. Pretty surprised, um, not sure why that is, but that's that's how the packs go sometimes. So you never know what you're gonna get. You know, like Forrest Gump would say, life is like a box of chocolates, and we definitely had a box of chocolates today. So uh, really, really cool and uh, really fun to open that stuff. Definitely messy. So if you find some of these online, it's definitely gonna be a messy opening, but you could find some really cool stuff. If you can find the separate plastic packaging, less mess, but also the chance that somebody could visually search those. So uh, I know I had talked about the chocolate, you know, so uh, we just kind of sped through. This stuff is really like powder at this point. It's falling apart. It's it's kind of like, like uh, you know, chocolate, uh, hot cocoa mix. So uh, not really anything, you know, maybe, Maybe this is kind of the consistency of Nesquik. Uh, not really edible, in my opinion. I, I don't know, Let, let's see. Maybe I'll try a piece here. 
I guess this is the most <laughs> intact piece. Let's hope I don't get sick. My wife is going to be pretty upset if I end up getting a stomach bug because <laughs> I eat some 20 plus year old chocolate. But I, I chickened out on the the pack of gum in the Heritage video from 2000, 2001. That was definitely newer. Um, so I guess I'll give this a try. Yeah, that's, that's old chocolate. <laughs> well, it doesn't taste bad. Um, <laughs> it's like putting a spoonful of hot cocoa mix, I guess. I can't say I know that from experience, but it's just like powder. It tastes like hot chocolate. Not the most pleasant experience, but Hopefully I don't get sick from it. I'll let you guys know <laughs> down in the comments section if I end up having a little bit of a stomach ache from that, but I got a little bit of an iron stomach, I think, so I, I should be all right. That was doing it all for you. Taking one for the team. If you get some chocolate, uh, just know it's not that tasty. Maybe you can mix it up in some, make some hot cocoa out of it. I don't know, but not a chocolate bar anymore. It's definitely a powdery consistency. So that's what we got. Uh, you know, so you saw me open the packs with the scissors. I was talking about the packaging being pretty thick, pretty difficult to open. And I hate opening packs in all honesty with scissors. I had an incident when I was a kid, really early on in my collecting, when I did open a pack with some scissors and got one of the cards cut. Uh, it was a David Robinson card. I love David Robinson. I was devastated. I was trying to convince myself that it was some sort of really rare variant. Definitely was not the case. I uh, just damaged a card. So I'm always very careful. I don't like opening packs with scissors. I know some people do. Uh, I know our friends over at Pack Geek, they tend to open packs uh, with scissors, which, you know, to each his own. I know some people that rip them with their teeth. Lots of different ways of doing it. Even my brother and I have a little bit slight variation of how we do it, but with our hands. So one of the reasons, or really the only reason I don't like doing the scissor opening is because the potential to damage the cards. So I always try to do whatever is safest for the cards and is going to keep them in the best condition. But question of the day for you is how do you open your packs? You know, do you have some sort of a special way? Do you use scissors? Do you use your teeth? Do you, you know, do something else? Uh, I, I'm sure there's a million different ways for everybody to open their packs. So that's the question of the day. What do you do to open packs? And if you don't open packs, which do you think would be the best method? Would you prefer to use scissors? Um, you saw me kind of shake the pack a little bit, and that's purely just to make sure that all the cards are as far away from where I'm going to be cutting as possible. So I, again, reduce my risk of, of cutting them. With it being a clear piece of plastic, it's a lot easier. But when you're dealing with, you know, a uh, printed piece of a, a package it's definitely harder to tell you can kind of feel it a little bit and, and see but you can definitely run the risk of, of having an accident so drop it down in the comments how do you like to open packs or how do you think might be the best way and uh, we can have a good discussion about that so as always thanks for taking your time watching this video and sharing this great hobby of ours if you're new here please consider subscribing hit the bell icon so you don't miss any videos regular videos will drop on Wednesdays any bonus content will drop on Fridays if you want to get any merch to support the channel, like the shirt that I'm wearing, the link to the merch shop is in the description below. Check that out and uh, you can get not only shirts, but there's plenty of other products that you can get there. So check it out, see what you might like and uh, help spread the word through some of the merchandise. Thanks. We'll talk later. Bye.